Christian church. Come on, somebody say yeah. Somebody say yeah. Somebody say yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 God is a good God. That's right. Amen. Yes, he is. Bless you every now and then. Come on, everybody standing. We're going to the word of God. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all sitting like y'all was up all night long. <laughs> Amen. The seniors, I understand. Amen. Praise God. My pastor taught us years ago. That's why on Saturdays I shut down at a certain time in the evening. He says that God deserves a rested body on Sunday morning. And so you ought to be able to stand for him on Sunday since he's been standing for you all week. Somebody just got that. Amen. And so as we gather, we praise God. I am certainly elated to have my friend, one of my best friends, sharing with us today all the way from uh, trying to find out what state he's from right now. He's been crisscrossing the country, San Francisco and Amen, and Georgia. And, uh, he's in Baltimore right now. Would you put your hands together for my friend, Reverend G. Lynn Taylor, for sharing with us. Amen. Good to see you, G. Praise God. He said, I might worship with you on today. He told me that on yesterday. I said, well, you're always welcome at the Pilgrim Baptist Church as we gather. God is, God is good. Amen. It's good to see you, Pilgrim. Good to be back. I missed y'all, but thanks to the ministerial staff for carrying and covering. Amen. Appreciate each and every one of you. In the book of Matthews, Matthews, Gospel, chapter 11, I want to begin reading at verse 28. Thank you, music ministry. I know we have some challenges, but praise God. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. We know how to we know how to sing without instruments, don't we? Amen. Matthew's Gospel chap chapter eleven, beginning in verse twenty eight. If you're with me, say amen. amen. All right. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Amen. Amen. I want to reason with us and talk from the subject, help for your burdens. Help for your burdens. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, ah, God, I feel you right now. <laughs> we thank you today, God. We thank you and praise you for yet another opportunity to proclaim your gospel speak through us make it clear and plain pray that you will give somebody what they need today not just for the day for the rest of this week this might be a season sermon for somebody help them through the rest of the year we bless you and we thank you for it all breathe on it now in the name of Jesus we thank you for what we're about to receive in Jesus name we pray 
Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Amen. Help for your burdens. Help for your, your burdens. When we look at the context of this, of this sermon and in this scripture, Jesus is speaking to people, to a people who are expending a lot of energy going in the wrong direction. And how many of you know that we live among a people who are using unnecessary energy going in the wrong direction? At times, life can be draining, hard work, long hours, kids, people, projects, problems, break-ins, break-outs, break-ups. Life can pull at us from all directions. Worry, stress, and busyness can overwhelm us. The pace of life can fill up schedules, technology. I love it and hate it at the same time because it makes us too available, accessible to the world responsibilities of everyday life that pull at us for more attention can cause us to be weary in mind body more importantly our souls that which is eternal our souls that which is eternal the soul is the inner man the inner woman the soul Jesus says that we are not to fear men who can kill the body but those who are able to kill the soul Matthew 10, the soul can become weary. The fight, the struggle, the race can cause us to be weary. And if you'll be truthful with me this morning, even right now, amen, you will say, that's me, Pastor Jones. Amen, weary, I'm physically exhausted, mentally drained, and spiritually needy. Am I talking to anybody up in here? Amen, amen, somebody said, I need him every hour. <laughs> All that we're going through in life and in living, I, I need him every hour. Sometimes, I'm sure, in your life, and maybe I can speak for myself, when I rise in the morning, sometimes I don't know how I make it and put one foot in front of the other based upon all the burdens that I have to carry and, and share along life's way. Don't tell everybody my stories, but... God knows what you go through and what I go through. He recognized that we all have burdens. Help for your burdens is found in these four words. Here it is. Three, four words, four words. Write those down. Write these down. Write these down. Come, take, learn, find. It's right there in the text. Amen. Come, take, learn, and find. Jesus gives us help for our problems, our burdens, y'all. It begins, y'all, with a call. Let the church say a call. A call or an invitation. The call is to come. Notice before you can follow Christ, you must first come to Christ. That's why he says, come unto me, all ye who are weary and, and burdened. And so there are a whole lot of people a man who recognized they're trying to follow him before they come to him. You've got to come to him. So it's just not just a call, but it's a call of hope. And whenever hope is mentioned in scripture, it's never mentioned in uncertainty. Uh, a call of hope, y'all. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. And I dare not trust the but I wish I had some folks down in, in the pews that would, amen, help me preach this morning. I know it's communion, but I want to, amen, share some things with you that I pray and trust that will bless your life to today, amen, and days to come. So come, come. The word come is a call. It's a call. Sometimes we can feel, amen, secure and safe. Everything is going well. And then out of the blue. Amen. There's a turn of events. Am I talking to anybody in here? And so Jesus is much aware of all of that that takes place in our lives. And so that's why he says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. One translation says heavy laden. Somebody say, amen, said that means that I'm exhausted. Anybody in here exhausted? Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm exhausted. 
praise God, an understanding of the setting of this text in which Jesus speaks these words. Jesus was talking about those who were weary and burdened, and he was talking about those who were weary and burdened from doing works of the law. Watch me. It's almost like someone working with an application that has been improved 20 years ago and they're still trying to get the job done with the old dated application. Come here. Stay with me. I mean, Grace was talking and nobody was listening here. Pharisees insisted that everyone strained and worked like mad to measure up to demand, to the demands of the law. But the more they tried to do this, the more they realized that even their best intentions are all messed up by sin. Are y'all with me here? St. Paul writes about this whole frustration in his letter to, amen, the first Corinthians when he, re he realizes that even though he wants to do good, as hard as he might try, he fails. Listen to what he says. I know that in me, that is, in my flesh dwells no good thing, for desire is present with me, but I don't find it doing that which is good. For the good which I desire, I don't do, but the evil which I don't desire that I practice. Amen. Paul says there's a frustration, and that was the frustration, and I'm sure that Jesus wanted the Pharisees to recognize that's a frustration because what you are doing as it relates under the law, you cannot achieve on your own. Help me, somebody. He's talking to a group of people who were trying to handle some things they couldn't handle without him. Come here a little closer. And how many of you know that even in your own life, Amen. That becomes a burden. When you're trying to handle some things in your life that you can't handle by, without him can become a burden. In spite of all of their efforts, amen, we can't get things right without him. Is there anybody here that when you look at your life and you recognize when you try to do things without him, those things become a burden. You can't do it or can't make it without him. You can't handle it. So well, let me... Here it is. Let, let me simplify this. We do not work to be saved. We work because we are saved. They were working to get God's attention. We work because God got our attention. Do I have a witness here? And so it's a call and they recognize that whatever you're doing, you can't do it without him. It's an invitation. It's a call to hope. Amen. The text says, amen, all you who are weary and, and, and laden, come unto me and I'll give you rest. Interesting enough, hey, that word all, all of you, aren't you glad that he didn't qualify the all? Amen. He could have said all of you. All of you who come to church on a regular basis, all of you who tithe, all of you that do this, that, and the other. He says, all of you who are weary, all of you who are under stress and tension and fear and discouragement, amen, understand if you've got a burden, he says, all of you come unto me and I'll give you rest. Praise God. Everybody, everybody, all of us, everybody got them. I said, everybody got them. What, what's that, pastor? Problems? <laughs> Do I have a witness here? Amen. I, I've come by to tell you, if you're alive and you've got breath in your body and blood running in your veins, you've got problems. You may look like you don't have any problems. Amen. Do I have a witness here? The songwriter said, I don't look like what I've been through. Sometimes you don't have to carry your problems on your face, but underneath you recognize that you've got them. All of us got them. We've got problems and we have burdens. If you've got something going on, he said, come unto me. Oh, who are, do I have a witness here? Come here. I need to help somebody because somebody's looking at their life and saying, I'm not qualified because of all of the stuff I've done. He really don't care. Do, do I have a witness here? <laughs> Amen. You're looking at all the stuff that you've done. There's somebody worse off than you. And the stuff that you've been through. And so, amen. Praise, it. Praise God. He says, listen, and I'll be, I'll, I'll be finished. won't be with you long. He says, listen, listen. This is an initiative and a kind, the kindness of the Lord. He says, all of you that are weary and, and, and burdened, he says, I'll give you rest. What an initiative. 
I will give you, when faced with the option of resting, sometimes, amen, we wrestle with that whole idea of being lazy because some folks will look at us because we're resting and maybe cause our, call our resting lazy. Church, there's always tension between busyness and rest. There's a difference between being busy and rest. Do I have a witness here? Mary and Martha, that whole story. Remember Mary and Martha when Jesus goes to the house and Martha was working at being busy and complaining and Mary was working at the feet of Jesus. Do I have a witness? There's always a tension between busyness and, and rest. Well, amen. What kind of rest is Jesus talking about? He's talking about kind of the rest that Psalms 4 and 8 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. That, that kind of rest. Rest in Psalms 46 and 1. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Do I have a witness here? Well, Stephen Hurd helps us out. And he he says it this way, my, when my heart is overwhelmed, I pray, Lord, lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Oh, Lord, yes, when my heart is overwhelmed, I'm asking, lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock that's higher than I. I oh, Lord, when the weight of this world, amen, this whole world tries to slay me, a strong tower from the enemies, you will be to me. So I need to find this place. Yes, the special secret place. I'm assured of your embrace. The place I call my sanctuary there you are. Lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock. Why? Because you are my firm foundation. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? My salvation, my solid rock. Is there anybody here that recognizes that he's your solid rock? On Christ, the solid rock, I, and all other ground is, I will give you rest. Not rest. Not rest, watch this, not, not rest from the work, but rest in the work. Do I have a witness here? Not the rest in inactivity, but the harmony, harmony of, of working uh, of the heart and the imagination and the affection. He'll do that. Listen to, to the rendering of Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29, energizing those who get tired. He gives strength, fresh strength to drop out. Do I have a witness here? I said he gives fresh strength to drop out. He said, but even when young people tire and drop out, young folks in the prime stumble and fall. But those who wait upon God gets fresh strength. They spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and they don't get tired. They walk and they don't lag behind. The promise is for new strength. Somebody shout hallelujah. He says, I'll give you rest. I'll give you new strength. I'll revive you. I'll rejuvenate you. I'll give you something on the inside that will cause you to stand when folks think and feel that you ought to be crumbling under the weight and the pressure of the burdens of life. I'll give you strength. Do I have a witness here? I suggested, I suggested to us, Last time I preached, last communion, I suggested, amen, that we should use the summer break for refocusing. Refocusing. And, 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 and rest is refocusing. Amen. It, it's recharging. You ought to be in a season of prayer asking God, amen, to rejuvenate me and allow me to refocus and, 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 and yeah, amen, recharge and prepare myself for the closeout of this year. And I've come by to tell you that that's why Jesus came. He came and he's talking, come unto me, those of you who are laden and heavy and burdened. He says, and I'll give you rest. He came to lift heavy burdens, y'all. I said he came to lift heavy burdens. Come, it's a call. Come, it's an invitation. Come, it's a call of hope. Then he says, here it is, the second one. Remember, I said four things. Come, and then the second one was take. It's a fantastic offer. Take. There is the amen. I said take. Here, it's, it's, it's right here. Take my yoke upon you. I want you to come, and then I'm going I want you to take something. Take my yoke upon you. Interesting name. Yoke. It's a picture of the and the image of a yoke, which is a harnessed piece of gear that is placed on two animals so that they can harmoniously and simultaneously carry or pull the workload. Well, here it is. Here it is. 
When my dad would preach this sermon, he'd preach this text, he would preach it from this perspective. He'd talk about in his days when he grew up on the farm in Hope, Arkansas, and how they would not put two strong mules together, but neither would they put two weak mules together. But they would take one strong and one weak and put them together, and the strong would compensate for the weak. Come here. You're going to get this in a second. That's why he said, take my yoke up on you. Do I have a witness here? He says, I want to get in the harness with you. And so whatever you're trying to pull, I know you're weak, but I'm strong. Do I have a witness here? When you get in the harness with me, we, we, we can carry the load. Do I have a witness here? Amen. That's all somebody needed to hear today. You needed to recognize that you don't have to carry the load all by yourself. Amen. I'm in the harness with Jesus, and he's stronger than I am. And what I can't pull, he can pull. Is there anybody here, amen, that no, take my yoke upon you? Take my... Here, yeah, take, amen, put them together, put them together, put them together. Jesus was telling them, watch this, if you hook up with me, <laughs> do I have a witness here? Amen. You can plow through some things. I said, if you hook up with me, you can plow through some things, watch this, with ease. Yoke is a metaphor for submission. Amen. So that means that when you hook up with Jesus, you can't just be pulling your way. Amen. You've got to, amen, go which way he wants to pull. I don't care what you see, amen, on the other side. You've got to make sure that he's in the lead, that he's pulling. Do I have a way? In the right direction. That is submission. If you hook up with me. Do I have a witness here? Is there anybody here that recognizes that if you hook up with Jesus, God can change the landscape of your life. He can change the outlook of your life. If you hook up with Jesus, do I have a witness? He can take you places that you've never been. He can take you places that you've never dreamed of. If you hook up with Jesus, do I have a witness here? He can bless your life more, amen, than anybody else. If you hook up with Jesus, yes, he can. He can open doors that no man can close. If you hook up with Jesus, do I have a witness here? He can put your name at the top of the list for a promotion if you hook up with Jesus do I have a witness here he can bless your life hey hey he says take my yoke take my yoke <laughs> do I have a witness here amen the yoke the yoke watch this the yoke not only speaks of a relationship with Christ but it also speaks of a relationship with you and me the yoke speaks of a team concept are y'all with me yoked together amen and made them a team uh, amen so understand hey, they, they don't work independently of one another they work together Jesus is saying become my yoke mate and my yoke partner and we can pull some stuff that they thought we could never pull here it is. We can pull off some things. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? We can pull, oh God, I, I feel Jesus. We can pull off some things that they said we couldn't pull off. Hey Amen. As, even as it relates to your health, when the doctor says no, if you yoke up with him, do I have a witness? We can pull off some stuff that they can't see on the chart. Do I have a witness here? And when you show back up at the doctor, they wonder what happened. Do I have a witness? Between your last visit and this visit, you tell them, I yoked up. I got a new yoke mate. mate. Do I have a witness here? I got a new yoke partner. Do I have a And he can pull off some things when you have the right mate. Hey, God. Team. Jesus urges us to take his yoke upon ourselves. The yoke that Jesus offers is not the kind that is burdensome or heavy, that chafes us or rubs us, but it is a yoke of love. Come on here. I'm almost finished. It. What a fantastic offer. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? 
He says, all of you, all of you, all of you. That's why, that's why I love Jesus. That's why you ought to be with Jesus. When, when folks look at you and think you don't have nothing to offer, they don't think much of you. Think that, amen, yeah, that you're beneath them, that you do I have a witness here. How many of you know that when you hook up with Jesus, Jesus can do some things that blow people's mind. Help me, somebody. Amen. All you have to do is stay with him. You ain't got to show and shine on your own. You don't have to speak or say anything. Do I have a witness? When you hook up with him, do I have a witness? He can bless you. He can do some things in your life. He can shine you up and show you up and show you off. Do I have a witness? Well, come, 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 come. Come unto me. Take my yoke. Then he says, learn. <laughs> it's right there in the text. It's right there in the text. He says, learn, learn, learn. It, it's what the yoke teaches. He says, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your soul. Learn, learn with Jesus. It's about several things, three things. Partnership, relationship, fellowship with him. And with one another. The opportunity to learn from, from him, he says, amen, that I'm strong. Watch this. I'm strong, but I'm gentle. I'm, I, amen. I'm strong, but I'm humble. Come by to tell somebody, come here, be strong, but be gentle. <laughs> be strong, but be humble. Do I, that's what the yoke teaches y'all. Do I have a witness here? Do you understand you don't have to toot your own horn? <laughs> you don't have to flex. <laughs> I'm getting ready to help somebody here. You know, a whole lot of folks want to flex and tell somebody who they are. You don't have to tell. If you just stand your ground, God will tell them who you are. <laughs> I'm trying to teach somebody here. <laughs> Learn. Do I have a witness here? Amen. Amen. It, it could be, it could be the strength of two pulling a load like, like preachers and preachers and deacons and deacons pulling a load. Do I have a witness here? Amen. Listen, story is told, story is told. Amen. Bear, Bear Bryant tells this story. He said, I'm just a plow hand from Arkansas. Uh, but I've learned how to hold a team together. How it lift some men up, how to lift some men up, how to calm, amen, some men down until finally they've got one heartbeat together. I'm talking team here. He's te yoke te speaks of team, amen. It's, it, it's, it's a team. There's just three things I, I'd ever say. He said, I'd say this to him. If anything goes bad, I did it. If anything goes semi-good, then we did it. If anything goes real good, then you did it. <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody. <laughs> Bear Brian says it, amen, that, that, that's all it takes to get people to win football games. Help me somebody. Is to recognize that when you're in a team together, you can't take all the credit. Are y'all with me here? Amen. You can't take all the credit. Sometimes you've got to, sh amen, let the light shine on somebody else because you're trying to build a team. Then really, actually, you know that you were, amen, the, amen, the force behind it, but you don't need to say anything about it because guess what? It's teamwork. Somebody help me. It's teamwork. It's, it's about teamwork. And so, Pilgrim, that's where we're going to the end of the year. I just needed to drop this in your spirit because the yoke teaches us, amen, that it's about teamwork. I said it's about teamwork so there's no one person that gets all of the credit that we recognize and we share the responsibility and we share the load to have a witness here and at the end of the day we all win and so what is winning advancing the kingdom of God 
help me. Amen. How many of you know that I'm tired and I'm sick of this social media and all of some of the clergy and Christian people are doing and saying on social media, it gives us a bad name. Do I have a witness here? And so I want to say to those in whom I cover, be careful what you say out there on social media. Stop hooking up and joining up with the wrong people and saying yes and co-signing for certain things that are not of God. Do I have a we have a responsibility to present ourselves in a way that's respectful and does not bring shame to the kingdom of God. Amen. Do I have a witness here? And so my brothers and my, it's teamwork. That's what we learn when we yoke up with him. My yoke. Do I have a witness? Learn. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm finished. Again and again, we hear him giving them, them rest. He comes and he says, amen, come, take Learn and find. Here it is. I'm finished. Find rest for your souls. Why? He said, I'll answer it in the next verse. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Do I have a witness here? So pilgrim, as we step into another week. We step into another week. As one person said, lying in a hospital, he said, I couldn't see any sense of my illness. In fact, I was angry at God. Why would God do this to me? He said, I was angry at God. I was angry at the doctors. I was angry at everyone. He said, but as I continued to live, I began to see God. I saw God use my burden. Do I have a witness here? I saw God use my problem to help lift the burdens of others. Can I tell you sometimes that the burdens that God puts on you is not for you? <laughs> He's just trying to get a message to somebody else. And he recognized that you'd be able to handle the burden. Do I have a witness? Come here, come here. I just got something from God. Amen. For some of you, your burden looks good on you. Because the world doesn't know what God is getting ready to do. Do I have a witness here? They look at you now and look like it's the end. They're getting ready to count you out. But how many know that that burden is now going to shift and turn and become a blessing? Can I have anybody up in here? That when you look back on your life and you look at the burdens in the, of life and you can see where you are and what God has done and that burden now has become a blessing because what did not kill you, guess what? Amen. Propelled you, got you up on your feet. You're stronger now than you were yesterday. If you had not gone through what you went through, you'd be able to take what you're going through right now. Is there anybody up in here that recognize that some burdens in your life are a blessing to make you who God wants you to be? Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm finished. I'm finished. Here it is. Preacher was busy in his study while his little boy looked at a book of pictures by the fireside. He suddenly wanted a large book. The preacher, and he had, hey man, he left it upstairs and asked his boy to go get it for him. The little boy went up the stairs and he was gone for a long time. And after a while, the father heard a sound of sobbing up on the stairs. He went out and he looked at the top of, of the stairs and saw the boy, amen, uh, reaching in the, in, the, in the staircase. He saw his son crying bitterly, with, amen, with this large book under his arm. And he says to his daddy, I'm tired, I can't carry it. Lying on his feet, his, old, his daddy says, oh, son, it's okay. The boy said, it's too heavy for me, daddy. In a moment, the father was up the stairs, stooping down. He took both the book and the boy in his arms, carried them, amen, to another room below, picked the boy up and his burden. And then he said, this is how God deals with his children. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? Amen. I know a whole lot of y'all want him to just lift your burden, but how many of you know that he not only lifts your burden, but he lifts you up too? Is there anybody here that's been lifted lately? Well, amen. I know it's communion Sunday, 
I said, I know it's communion Sunday. That's what Jesus did on Calvary's cross. Amen. God took his boy by the name of Jesus and his burden while he was on Calvary's cross. When they stretched him wide, dropped him low, put a crown on his head, put spears him in the side. Do I have a witness here? Amen. God picked up his boy. They took him, put him in a borrowed man tomb. God sent an angel to roll the stone away and God picked up his boy and his burden. Do I have a witness here? And now he sits at the right hand of God giving intercession. Amen. For us. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. How many know that God will do it? He'll pick up you and your burden. He'll bless your life and you're going out and you're coming in. Won't he do it, y'all? I said, won't he do it? Is there anybody here glad that he picked you up? Is there anybody here? No, he will turn you all around. He will bless your life. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Yes. Won't he do it, y'all? Won't he do it? Won't he bless your life? Won't he bless your life? Yes. 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 Can't nobody. You'll find help for your, your burdens. Come, uh, take, learn, and find <laughs> help for your burdens. I know you got them. Praise God. But yoke up with him, and he'll bless your life. Yeah. Hey, God, I, I feel like preaching some more, but I got to close. My, 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 my. Haven't preached in four weeks. I got a little preaching in me. <laughs> hey, God. My, my, my. Hey, my, 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 my. I'm telling you what I know myself. I'm telling you what I, I, I know myself. God, God. God, some stuff. God will send you through some stuff. Sometimes we may trivialize it. But God takes us through those things for a reason, for a purpose. Amen. I, burdens. Yoke up with him. We were, uh, the wife and I, on our little vacation Many of you know that we have a property in Florida, and we were there, and the vehicle that we have there was giving me some trouble. Um, and so I took it to the mechanic. He said, this is what you're going to need. It's amazing. I thank God for technology and some things. He said, the part that you're going to need is going to cost you $6,000. I said, well, I'm not willing to pay $6,000. So I made some phone calls, a gentleman in, that worked with in the neighborhood, and I said, I, he's got a car just like mine, vehicle, and I said, what do I need to do? He says, he said go on eBay. He said, Lewis, and find this. Went on eBay and found the same part that's called $6,000. I found it for $300. <laughs> I'm like you. I'm happy. Hey. So he go, I go, I take it there, I put the part on. I'm just as happy as I can be. I pick it up. I'm driving it home. I'm picking up dinner on the way home. I go, park it, go in. Hey, man, I'm spry coming out, getting ready to get into my vehicle that's fixed. I get in it, it won't start. 
I won't start. I couldn't turn the ignition. And I said, that's strange. This Friday evening, they closed on Saturday. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> and so I called the wife, tell her, I said, well, let me call AAA. I said, well, it was late that evening. So I said, well, they are closed. I don't know. Let me just see what I need to do. I called, left a message. I waited for Saturday morning, got up, called AAA to come and tow it or maybe give me a, a jump or something. I don't know what would take it. I called AAA. True story. Took them five hours. <laughs> I'm waiting. The first AAA person came, says, can't do nothing with it. It needs a tow. He calls the tow people. I'm still waiting. Waiting five, six hours. Finally, a tow truck got there. He comes and says, can you turn the key? I said, no. He said, well, if you can't turn the key, I can't tow it. I said, then what? I, he said, you need a different tow truck. <laughs> I said, okay. I don't, I said, okay. I said, there's got to be something we can do. He said, sir, he said, I have been, you know, I know it's taken a while to get to you. He said, I'm backed up. I'm, I'm the only tow truck in this area. And so he said, let me see what I can do. He pulls out his phone, goes on YouTube, and said, let me see if I can do something to cause the ignition to turn. Goes on YouTube, he finds something, he looks at it, takes about 10 minutes. He said, I think I can do something. He goes inside, he takes the gearbox off, hits a switch, it releases the ignition so that the wheel can turn. We can put it in neutral, roll it out of the space, put it on the truck. I said, praise the Lord. We six, seven hours now. But we get it over there, and the mechanic happens to be there. I said, he said, I said, wow, I called. He says, no, I'm not working. He said, I, I, I'm so backed up, I decided to come in on Saturday and do some work. He says, what happened? I said, I don't know. He says, we'll look at it on Monday. He calls me on Monday and says, your gearbox has gone out. I said, gearbox? He said, yeah. He said, they do that sometimes. I said, all right. I said, uh, what are we talking? We'll let you know. He calls me. He says, that's 6000 something. <laughs> I, said, I said, help me, Jesus. <laughs> I, I tell you no lie. I tell the guy, the guy says a used one is $2,800, what we're going to do. I said, all right. I said, well, I, I said, I'm not willing to do any of them. What you going to do? I said, I don't know. Y'all find another way. <laughs> said, and so the owner calls me. He said, I think I, I know what we can do. There is a part out there that can override this. And so he found a part for $600 to override it. He put it on. He put it on, Rev. Cook. I'm happy again. I'm happy again. I pick it up. I drive it for about a half a day. And the no there's a noise in the wheel birds. Watch this. The noise in the, in the wheel bird. The convention is going on in, in, in Orlando, Progressive National. I pick up a friend, a couple, and they get in the back seat and says, Lewis, it's nothing but hot air coming out of this bed. And I mean, it's already 95 degrees in Florida. And it was hot as hot. You touch it. it and I'm saying, <laughs> I'm, sa I'm just talking about burdens. <laughs> I'm just telling you. <laughs> and so I call him. I said, man, something's wrong. I said, y'all trying to make me buy a new car or something? I can't afford it right now. I take it back up there. They see it on my face. He said, you're mad at me. I said, no, I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. I said, I don't know what's going on. 
And so I go in, and the owner's wife is in there. She says, she says Mr. Jones, we're going to take care of it. It's got to be something minor. Whatever it is, says, we're going to handle it. I said, thank you for being optimistic. <laughs> I did. I told her those words. I said, because I'm not. 